cost management. This week, we are looking at capital budgeting. First topic, topic one, discounted cash flows and the time value of money. All right, so this is a trigger when we are looking at the time value of money that we are looking beyond one year because when it is beyond one year, we get to discount it because a dollar in the future is worth less in today's dollars. So we have to account for that. So what does that really mean? It means that capital budgeting is when we are looking at long-term projects, so items greater than one year. First, some definitions. Capital budgeting is the process of determining what a company should spend on in the long term. This typically means determining what projects the company will pursue, what facilities and equipment they will purchase, and which people they will hire. As decisions will have different risk profiles and costs, capital budgeting helps us to decide whether or not the investment is a good decision. Common methods of capital budgeting include net present value, or NPV, analysis, IRR analysis, so internal rate of return, as well as payback analysis. We'll be looking at all of those this week. The discounted cash flow analysis. Uh, this one is my favorite. Uh, this one is pretty robust. It can be used uh, in several different elements, and you'll see it often in like a quant qual analysis in CPA. So discounted cash flow analysis, it's the process of analyzing cash flows, inflows, and outflows for a particular project, maybe for a company, or activity, and then discounting them back to present day. It's the, uh, so the net present value analysis is the most common form of discounted cash flow analysis. This is where, uh, in an NPV analysis, all cash flows are entered into a timeline, and then a discount rate is used to approximate what the cash flows are worth today. The usefulness of a net present value, an NPV model, depends heavily on the accuracy of inputs and a realistic uh, selection of a discount rate. Please note that the discount rate is often referred to as the required rate of return or hurdle rate. Uh, one of the reasons why it's so important to get a realistic discount rate is because uh, you are looking at whether or not this project standalone is going to be able to make your company money. And for example, if you pick uh, a discount rate of 3%, you're like, oh, cool, like more or less inflation, but your bank borrowing rate is 8%. Uh, say this, um, you discounted at 3%, it comes back positive, and you're like, oh, cool, like this is great. Um, but then you do an IRR analysis and realize that the internal rate of return on this um, investment ends up being 5%. Well, you've actually lost your freaking company money because you're borrowing at 8% and you're making 5%. So you've just taken all, all that risk, all that work just to like lose your company 3%. So um, <laughs> garbage in, garbage out. That is not a term that is just applicable to... Oh goodness, uh, thought processes and uh, an audit, but it really is, uh, you know, it, it's it's all over. So making sure that our inputs are good and then our analysis can be sound. Um, I'll say it before, I've said it before and I'll say it again, that um, we are not competing with the robots. And if you listen to uh, the podcast uh, or the interview with uh, Rob this week, yeah, you'll see that I'm not the only one that thinks like that. So we have to understand what are the robots saying, how can we identify when they're wrong, and how to make the most out of the analysis. Okay. The simplest way to illustrate how a discounted cash flow model works is with a simple example. So we're gonna look at an example on the next slide. Um, we're, and what we're gonna do in this example is to show each cash flow to be placed in a table that illustrates the passage of time. And then we're gonna sum the inflows and the outflows each year. And then we're gonna discount those um, net inflows and outflows back to the present day. And then we'll add it up. If the net present value exceeds zero, it indicates that the, po the project has a positive return above the hurdle rate, which means that quantitatively, this project should be accepted as it has exceeded the minimum risk threshold of project acceptance. Notice how I say quantitatively. We'll discuss the other part of that, which is qualitatively, near the end of the video. 
What's really cool about, yes, I said it. What's really cool about uh, net present value and discounted cash flows is that this is how you analyze two different projects that have different inflows and outflows. And if you can only do one, so you, this is a way to make apples and oranges comparable because you're sticking them both into their own uh, timeline and you're equalizing uh, the time value of money to actually see which one will make your company uh, the most money. Okay, let's look at that example. Super Sausage Makers Inc. is looking at a new system with an install cost of $540,000. This equipment is depreciated at a rate of 20% per year over the project's five-year life, and at the end of which sausage system can be sold for $80,000. The sausage system will save the firm $170,000 per year in pre-tax operating costs, and the system requires an initial investment in net working capital of $29,000. If the tax rate is 34% and the discount rate is 10%, what is the net present value of the project? Okay, so let's break out our Excel or our table and take a peek. So here we are going to put in our install cost of 540,000, which represents an outflow of the initial cost. Our case facts also said that there would be an increased output of net working capital of 29,000. So again, this goes into our initial year, which is year zero. Okay, so all of this needs to be done before we have anything that happens, um, meaning any inflows or subsequent outflows. So that's why it goes in year zero. And then we start our discount rate, our, um, our N of one, uh, as far as time goes, in year one. So we have the outflows in year zero, and then we start having our savings the subsequent year. Okay, so please note that for each of these cash flow, this example is placed into the correct row, as I just mentioned, based on its category and timing. So inflows or outflows. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that uh, the discount cash flow row, so the total DCF, that is just our total cash flows and then present valued back using the discount rate. So you'll see that because it's zero zero, there is no, no reason to time value money, something that happened in our current year. But we're gonna have the time value money apply for an N of one in uh, for year one and N of two for year two, which is why we keep getting uh, smaller and smaller the further we go on because we know that $1 in year one is worth more than $1 in year two, is worth more than $1 in year three, and that the further we go in the future, the less that a money earned in five, a dollar earned or saved in five years is worth in today's dollars. So this row here represents that $112,200 in a year from now is actually worth $102,000 in today's dollars. And $112,200 in four years is actually worth $76,634.11 in today's dollars. Okay, so we go through and we see that our outflow of cash for year zero recoups um, our it provides the savings of 112, 200, years one, two, three, four, and five. And then we get to receive back our investment in networking capital. And we also have the salvage value of $80,000. We were advised in the question that all of these savings are pre-tax. We are also not, um, this hasn't taken into consideration um, any any tax implications, any um, tax shield, uh, so present value of tax shield or any foregone tax shield. So this is a relatively uh, simple example just meant to illustrate um, how we look at years zero to five, how we place in our inflows and outflows of cash, and then, um, then see what this comes back at. Okay, so I will mention uh, that we did look at the present value of the uh, tax shield, so pardon me, we do have our present value of our tax shield here. Uh, you will not be responsible for calculating that in an exam just because it is a, a quite a long uh, item and such a small kind of um, amount of your marks and also could take a long time to kind of study it and I want you to understand how we put this entire thing together. 
Uh, what I will say is that sometimes um, because the foregone tax shield, because remember we get the CCA savings from the outflow of uh, cash for our installed items, we get the CCA um, every year with our tax return. And what we're doing here is just um, is just summing it back. And since it's in year zero, that won't hit our discounted kind of items here. If we had just put it in every year, it, we may have accidentally then included in our total cash flow and then discounted again, which would be incorrect. So we just tend to do the present value of our CCA tax savings, PV, CCA, TS, uh, and put it into year zero so that we don't accidentally double discount it. Okay, um, and then yeah, sometimes we would have a foregone tax shield because when we sell it, we would no longer get the CCA savings, uh, but this tends to be uh, a relatively small number um, once you actually see that, oh, you're getting 80,000, so the CCA savings would be like a fraction of a fraction of this, and then discounted back to year zero. Uh, so typically in CPA, uh, sometimes we'll either see a very small number or we'll hear people just assume that it is immaterial to the decision. Okay, um, also in CPA or in um, or in undergrad, you may see these numbers be given to you uh, just so that you don't have to um, actually do the calculations and just understanding where they go and what they represent is how you can demonstrate confidence for your examination. Okay, so what does all of this say? Once we look at our DCF, once we add up your zero, one, two, three, four, five, we have an NPV of positive $29,582.70. What do you think that means? Well, if you said it's positive so that the project on a quantitative basis should be accepted, you would be correct. Okay, notice how I said quantitative. We're now at that part where I alluded to earlier. When looking at a discounted cash flow analysis, uh, it is important to not focus too heavily solely on the quantitative elements as this can lead to overlooking important qualitative considerations. Each time a quantitative model is built, it should be accompanied by analysis of the qualitative pros and cons of an option. Some typical considerations include how the design might affect employee engagement, product quality, reliability of supply, and can go on and on for any relevant case facts. It is possible for an analysis to have a positive quant and to be rejected due, due to qualitative factors. The opposite is actually also true. You can have a negative quant result and overwhelmingly um, favorable qualitative factors and choose to accept the project. So thinking back to the interview I just did with Rob, um, we are trying, not trying, like this is how we add value. We are not competing with the robots, meaning that our jobs involve a ton of professional judgment. When asking an accounting question, whether it's financial reporting or cost management, my answer is typically it depends as I dig in further and try to get more details so that I can uh, really just assess the situation and analyze appropriately. Time for a question. A project is being considered by your company. The project would have an initial cost today of 100,000 and it would produce cash inflows of 45,000 per year for three years. And then the project would end. These are all of the cash flows. Management would like you to perform an NPV analysis on the project using a discount rate of 14%. What is the net present value? All right, I suggest pausing the video uh, getting out your Excel or your financial calculator, giving this a go and see how you do. If you said A, $4,473.42, by the way, like, sorry, sorry about the, the cents, uh, <laughs> um, then you would be correct. Uh, this is the following computation that we used to calculate the NPV here. So uh, you could have stuck it into your calculator and you could have um, done your PV for a three-year uh, annuity 
using a discount rate of um, 14 cents. If you prefer to kind of do it the longer way, we have um, put it like this on the screen. Just remembering that the outflow is that 100K and then we get an inflow from the produ production of cash flows. Um, notice that we can either produce cash inflows or like the last example, maybe it is uh, savings. So both of those are, are relevant inflows to be analyzed. Okay, and that gets us to once we add up all of these, we get 4,400, <laughs> just $4,400 and uh, it's positive. All right, great work. Thank you so much. We will dig into some of the other types of capital budgeting tools that you may see uh, in your assignments, uh, on your exam, as well as at CPA, if that's just, uh, the route that you choose to go into. All right. Thank you so much. Talk soon.